What's up guys, this is Xander Bennett from The Rare Candy here, and today I'm going over our top 10 cards for Unified Minds. This set is going to drop right before Worlds. Eric and I did a set review for this on the channel, so if you're interested in seeing more of our thoughts on this set, you can go check out that video. But what we did for today's top 10 is that I'm going to be the one recording this, and I had everyone involved for Rare Candy, so myself, Eric, Kenneth, Carl, and Zach each give me their top 10 lists. We then averaged them all together, and then I had everyone give me an honorable mention. So for this top 10, we're going to go over the five honorable mentions that each person gave in, and then the top 10 cards for this set. This set has a lot of really powerful cards that I didn't really consider at first, but now I'm very excited to see how they show up going into the Worlds format, and I can't wait to talk about them with you guys and to see how they show up in future standard formats. So let's dive right into this top 10 with our honorable mentions. All right, so starting off the honorable mentions, my honorable mention of choice is Behem. Behem is a stage one psychic type Pokemon, and the most relevant attack is Mysterious Noise for three colorless energy, which can very easily be provided by triple acceleration energy. You use Mysterious Noise for 90 damage, and you shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your deck. Your opponent cannot play any item cards from their hand during their next turn. So I think this is a really neat lock engine that you can use with triple acceleration energy, there are things that like Zebstrika that survive rotation that you can use to filter through your deck very quickly, or also Pidgeotto that you can use to draw into these pieces again over and over again. With Ditto Prism, you have like five Elglums that you can put into your deck so that you have more ways to put them down onto your bench to use on your next turn. And then since you shuffle the Pokemon into your deck, the triple acceleration energy will not get discarded before you end your turn. So really easy to be able to use this attack over and over again. We have a handful of decent walls that survive the format with Keldeo GX replacing Hoopa, as well as some other things. If you want to go a little bit bigger, there's Aerodactyl GX, but mainly I think on its own, just this 90 and they can't play items with things like Mareep that put them to sleep is enough to kind of keep this deck moving to be something really strong. So very excited to see how this card impacts standard because you have a lot more space than you'd want to admit. The Behem line, the Treasures, and some other Pokemon search are generally straightforward, and then from there you can build the deck however you really want. When you combine Mareep with Slumber Forest and the fact they can't play items, this is a really potent lock deck that I think can definitely exist in this Worlds format with the amount of consistency that we have. Alright, coming up next on our list is Aegislash as Eric's honorable mention. This was one of the first testing grounds that we uploaded to the channel, so if you want to see this deck in action, be sure to go over there. But Aegislash is a stage 2 130 HP psychic type Pokemon that has the ability Durable Blade, which says if this Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, put it into your hand instead of the discard pile, as well as an attack for one colorless called Trash Slash that is 10 times the number of items in your discard pile and you can't do more than 130. So I think this restriction for the 130 damage really doesn't matter because you have a lot of ways to get to that number and then just two shot a lot of the relevant GX's in the format. Between things like Acrobike, which is a free consistency item that you can play, though that wasn't something that Eric chose to put into his list. Outside of that, you have Pokegear as an item that lets you get supporters. Rare Candy obviously lets you get your Aegis Slashes out, but maybe not entirely synergistic because you want to get the Dubblade back. This deck really can just thrive in the long game because it doesn't need a whole lot to get going. You can play powerful items like Reset Stamp, which not only increase your damage, but disrupt your opponent. And just with Recycle Energy, use Trash Slash over and over and over again because the Recycle Energy when the Pokemon dies will go back to your hand, but then also the Aegis Slash when it dies will go back to your hand. So it really can't even be disrupted by cards like Reset Stamp from your opponent because they have to play it and then attack, so it'll go back to your hand no matter what. So the consistency of this deck is just being able to play a straightforward, long game, and doing 130 over and over again is knocking out most of the non-GX decks in the format and two-shotting most of the relevant GXs in the metagame. So I believe this is one of our honorable mentions just because it could be less consistent as a stage two deck, but once it gets going, it's kind of unstoppable unless decks are able to just out-trade you. There's also things like Spell Tag and Mysterious Treasure because this is a psychic Pokemon that you can use just to get extra damage where you need it. And then on top of that, you can play through things like Shrine of Punishment so that you can just add up those damage for more relevant 270s and 280s in the format. So, Aegislash, super interesting card, and once again, I think this is another powerful Psychic-type Pokemon that we could see in the Worlds format if the metagame is one that makes this want to work. 
Next up is Kenneth's honorable mention, and that is Chandelure. Chandelure is a 140 HP stage 2 Pokemon and with an attack for one fire energy called Spirit Burner. You discard the top 5 cards of your deck, and this attack does 10 plus 60 for each Pokemon you discarded in this way. Notably, not fire type Pokemon, just Pokemon. Then, you may put any number of fire Pokemon you discarded this way onto your bench. So, this card I definitely chalked up to be not as impressive at first. But the more that I saw this card with Charizard from Team Up, this deck just became insanely powerful. You can play Chandler just as a way to get those cards out onto your bench, and then the ability for Charizard powers itself up so that later on when you need to take a bigger knockout or you can't discard cards from your deck, you can use that as a big finisher to take more relevant knockouts on tag teams. Outside of that, Chandler could be seen more so as a consistency card for that deck, just allowing you to get your Charizards or maybe even a Charmeleon or two out so that those Charizards can hit the ba the battlefield. This deck, I think, would probably thrive in a metagame full of tag teams and decks that have a lot of prizes. Be having to discard the top five cards of your deck six different times to knock out non-GXs seems really hard, just because that's 30 cards out of your deck, and you're going to play some supporters here and there, so your deck's going to be looking really small. Um, Brock's Grit does live in the standard format right now, so you are able to shuffle stuff back in. And then if you wanted to play something like the Mewtwo that puts a supporter card on top of your deck, this could be loopable. But outside of that, this deck really needs some kind of late game that Charizard really brings up. So excited to see if this deck can make it in standard. Um, haven't played too much of it outside of just some random testing. But I do think that the inclusion of Charizard in this deck just allows this deck to take really big nukes whenever it needs to. And Charizard getting two fires out of your deck whenever you need it to really ups your chance of hitting off a of Spirit Burner. So I think this deck is really sweet and definitely playable because once you get the first Chandelier out with a Rare Candy, if you hit a Lampin or another Chandelier, your deck is ready to go for the next turn. And then if you hit a Charizard off of it, then you're even stronger for taking big knockouts in the future. And you could wait a turn if you miss a Chandelier piece and use that as an attacker. So I think the deck is super sweet and ready to go and really fun and honestly can probably only get better as the standard format goes on. So really excited to see the Chandelier in this standard format. Next up for Carl's honorable mention, we have Heatran GX. Heatran GX is a basic fire type 190 HP Pokemon with an ability and two attacks. So the ability is Burning Road and it says once during your turn, when this Pokemon moves from your bench to become your active Pokemon, you may move any number of fire energy from your other Pokemon to it. And then for Fire Fire Colorless, you do a solid 130 flat. And then for one fire, you do Hot Burn GX, which does 50 damage times the number of fire energy attached to this Pokemon. So Eric and I kind of bagged on this in the set review, but what we can really see this doing, or from what Carl said to us, is just as a really la easy late game finisher to move energies you have on different Pokemon to one Pokemon. The thing that Eric and I were talking about in the set review that we weren't super fond of was that if you needed to take a really huge knockout and you had all your energy on like a Retram Charizard GX, you could just use the GX attack on that Pokemon. But if you have two energy on one Pokemon from a Welder and then maybe like an Arcanine with some energies on it, like if your energy is distributed more so, you can use an Escape Rope or a Switch or Retreat with a Skateboard to make this your active Pokemon and then move all of those random energies to this one Pokemon to take that huge knockout. This attack with five or six energy depending on how much HP that Pokemon has, can easily one-shot any of the tag teams in the format with a basic. And so being able to get this card out with relative ease and just move those energies onto it with its own ability means that you can be taking really big knockouts with this GX attack. The normal attack is surprisingly just fine. 130 for 3 energy does work out well against like the the Baby Buzz Wolves and the Zapdoses and stuff like that in the format. So you might find yourself using that attack every so often. Um, where that is nice is if you have like a Rush Ram Charizard that's taken a hit and you want to continue attacking without it getting knocked out on their next turn, you can just retreat it, use this ability, and put the energy onto it. And that, that's one thing that's really nice. If you just retreat normally and then you make this your active, you can move the energy to it already. So it kind of has like a, this own built-in scramble switch, half max potion type effect with it that can make this card just like a strong one of in the fire type decks that exist in the format. Outside of this, another use that he said was that you can use this in Blacephalon to get around Fairy Charm Ultra Beast. So since you have the energies on Noggenadles and Blacephalons, you can retreat into this Pokemon and then have a big attacker that can get outside of that tool. So with Field Blower rotating, you don't really want to put 
anything else into your deck to really deal with that card. So if it is something that you expect out of some random decks, that is like a very niche usage that he brought up. So might be something to consider if you're expecting a lot of fairy decks in the format, especially ones that are trying to tech against Ultra Beast. But I do think that the grander usage is kind of this pseudo max potion healing switching effect that can really be used to kind of catch opponents off guard whenever you need to. So a little bit stronger than we initially gave it credit for, just trying to think of the implications of the card, but this is something worth considering in your fire decks, maybe if you have a few extra slots here and there. Lastly, for our honorable mentions, we have Zach's honorable mention, and that is Tapu Fini, which is hilarious knowing the Blounds player that Zach Lesage is. Tapu Fini has two attacks. It is a basic water type Pokemon with 120 HP, and the main attack that we're going to be looking at here is Nature Wave, which for water, water, colorless does 100 but if your opponent has any Ultra Beasts in play, you can use this attack for a colorless. So this is the first time that Pokemon has had an attack that reduces the cost of the attack in the text itself. So that's a really unique design thing that I hope that they use more often. But against Blacephalon, this is a easy one energy, one shot your Blacephalon GX. And it has more utility outside of that in against decks that just play Ultra Beasts randomly against like the Zapdos Beast deck. This can just be used as a solid 100, um, but there are a surprising amount of relevant Ultra Beasts in format, and I know that Buzzwell GX and a lot of the original guard of the Ultra Beasts that were in standard are rotating out, but for as long as they continue to make sets from the Sun and Moon era until Sword and Shield come out, Ultra Beasts are going to be printed, so this card just ends up with a lot of value as Blacephalon just continues to be a strong deck that doesn't really lose much to rotation. So if you expect a ton of Blacephalon, this is a really easy tech that you can put into your deck. Without any Rescue Stretcher in format, you don't have a great way to get this back and use this effect over and over again, but you definitely can get a lot of tempo just from taking one big knockout with this. So very scary card if you're a Blacephalon player, very much so like Zach Lesage is, and so that's why this honorable mention is brought to you by him. All right, so starting off our top 10 strong, we have a tag team already. This is Garchomp and Giratina GX. This is a dragon type basic with 270 HP and three very strong attacks. So let's get right into it. The first attack is for one colorless, it's a linear attack. You do 40 damage to any of your opponent's Pokemon, not applying weakness and resistance to bench Pokemon. Then for psychic fighting colorless, you do 160. And then if your opponent's active has any damage counters already on it, this attack does 80 more. So if they have damage on them, this is effectively three energy for 240, which is very good. And then the GX attack, which I would be startled to see anybody use, is GG and GX. For Psychic Psychic Fighting, you discard one of your opponent's Pokemon and all cards attached to it. But if you have three additional Fighting Energy, you discard two of your opponent's Pokemon instead. So you're not taking any knockouts whenever you use this attack, but you are just discarding one of their Pokemon in play outright. Um, funny enough, I think the GX attack is the worst attack on this card. I think this card slots easily into Malamar, which I would dare say is the most consistent deck going into this upcoming Worlds format. Having Mysterious Treasure to get all of your Malamar pieces and to get this attacker make the deck super duper freaking consistent and you can just do the same game plan every time. You have Jirachi that doesn't get lost to rotation as well as a skateboard to keep that engine going. And then between using Linear Attack and Giratina with the um, Distortion Door and Spell Tag, you can put damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon really easily. And so I think that Having both of these Giratina cards in your deck, funny enough, they combine very well to have a late game attacker that can just do a bunch of damage. Um, Viridian Forest really easily can get the fighting energy that you need, kind of similar to how decks were playing low counts of metal energy with Ultra Necrozma GX. So you can almost completely just switch the fighting counts with this and then put in another fighting energy because you don't get the utility from Beast. But I think this card is very solid in the Malamar deck and it will allow you to take big knockouts on tag teams because you can spread out your damage from spell tag, just put one on each of their Pokemon that you expect to be able to attack, and then this thing can be doing 240 damage for three energy as soon as turn two or turn three, depending on how many Malamars you get out and how you spread that damage out with Distortion Door. So very strong, and if you're looking for a deck that's just gonna achieve its game plan every single time without any issues, I would start looking into this Giratina, Giratina Garchomp, Malamar deck going into the Worlds format or the DC Open format. Alrighty, coming in at number nine on this list is Great Potion. Great Potion is a really simple item card that says heal 50 from your active Pokemon GX. This card is super awesome in the greens mix herb style GX decks 
that have existed in the format previously. It just gives you four more ways to heal your active for relevant damage against the decks that are trying to kind of take some chip knockouts on you. It really forces decks to have to just get their one shots or you're just going to heal 50 or 100 damage on your turn off your active tag team and it really makes their survivability a lot higher. Obviously the deck that's been playing this the most recently is Retroram Charizard GX, but being able to throw this as well into maybe a Buzmosa deck or a Lucario Melmetal deck, if that stall archetype kind of survives past this rotation, it just really means you're going to have fast healing from any of your opponent's decks that are not going to be one-shotting you, which is what the, the tag teams thrive on. They're, they're worth three prizes, so you really need to maximize the amount of time they're in play, and this is a great card to go in that style of deck. Um, this could be used against something like the Garchomp Giratina deck to heal the extra damage on your active so they can't do the additional with their secondary attack. So just some interesting tech that you could use if that's a deck that you're expecting a lot of. But Great Potion just messes up a lot of the math from these decks that are not going to be one-shot you in a very relevant way. So if you're expecting some more of the Zapdoses or maybe even the Chandelure that we talked about just doing a little bit less depending on how the hits go off of its attack, this could really be some relevant healing for your deck that I would definitely consider, especially with greens, because you can search it so easily with that card. Coming in at number eight is Tag Switch. And I'm going to say, this is the card that had the most controversy between all of our lists. Some of us had this card pretty high up, as high as like fourth or fifth in our list, and some of us had this as low as our tenth card. So just for comparison, that's how this card kind of ended up, more so towards the bottom middle of the set list. But still being in the top ten cards of this humongous set is something to be said. So what does Tag Switch do? It is an item card that says move up to two energy from one of your tag team Pokemon to another one of your Pokemon. Notably, this does not have to go from a tag team to a tag team. The energy just have to come off of a tag team to start and then they can end up on any of your Pokemon, which makes this very relevant for this upcoming standard format. A lot of the tag teams that we're seeing all have very good energy acceleration within their types. So there's Welder for Reshiram Charizard decks, Full Blitz for Pikachu Zekrom, Malamar for Garchomp Giratina, and then Beast Ring for Buzzwell Feramosa. So that allows Tag Switch to have a lot of really easy decks just to slot into. Outside of that, there's Mew Mewtwo GX, which you can use this to set up another Mew Mewtwo to use whatever attack you have in your discard pile. And so the amount of utility that this card has just really lets it be a very good energy switch replacement, or maybe even decks that were not playing energy switch previously might play this card just because the value of moving two energies instead of one is a really big deal. That means that you can use attacks that cost three energy with an attachment onto one of your Pokemon in a tag switch essentially out of nowhere. And part of what we were talking about with Heatran being able to move energies onto itself very easily make tag switch very good. I think the deck that this card's going to shine the most in is Pikachu Zekrom because you get six energies into play very fast with full blitz and then you accelerate them. And then you can move the energies onto whatever attacker that you want, be it another Pikachu Zekrom or a Raichu Alolan Raichu to go for that style of approach to the deck. So with Zera Aura allowing you to retreat into whatever Pokemon that you want to use, you can then use Tag Switch to move energies onto it. And for as long as tag teams are being printed, this is a card that will definitely be considered in those archetypes because the tag team's energy acceleration isn't really going anywhere. Um, one thing with Buzzle Feramosa is that you can play Beast Ring and Tag Switch with it. So maybe your deck doesn't even really need to use Buzzle Feramosa as an attacker, but whenever you go down to three or four prizes, you can move the energy onto Buzzle Ferrum, or you can put the energy onto Buzzle Feramosa with a Beast Ring, and then move them with Tag Switch onto whatever attacker you want to use. So just a really interesting option for those decks, just to be able to constantly move energy around, which is a really powerful effect in this format that has so many attackers that are just taking big knockouts. So I would say this is almost an essential card to consider in your tag team decks as maybe a one of or a two of, or if you were playing energy switch, possibly even more. I think this card is surprisingly underrated by a lot of people, and it's going to be very strong going into worlds because of how many good tag teams there are. So definitely check this card out, and I'm really excited to see what crazy things happen when people play one or two tag switch in a turn and just take humongous knockouts out of nowhere. Coming in at number seven on this list, we have Keldeo GX. Keldeo GX, as I mentioned earlier, is a 170 HP water type basic with the ability Pure Heart that says prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's Pokemon GX or Pokemon EX, as well as having two attacks. For Water Water Colorless, you have Sonic Edge for 110, and this attack's damage is not affected by any effects 
of your opponent's active Pokemon. And then also for Water, Water, Colorless, it has Resolute Blade, which does 50 damage times the number of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So that'll sound very similar to Dangerous Rogue GX, and it should because it is the same attack. This card is very solid and is lower on this list than it probably would be because of the rotation of Aqua Patch. This card will require three manual attachments to power up on its own, and Pure Heart is very good, but this card struggles from just some awkward things to consider when maybe using this as a wall or a stalling card because it has a two retreat cost. So you can't really just send it up with an escape board and then retreat it into whatever you want to use for an attack. Maybe a Behem or a um, Archeops, just trying to use this walling effect to uh, prevent your opponent from taking knockouts. It is very solid on its own, and there's also Amistar in format that stops your opponent from playing items, so it could be a very dangerous threat that's hard to get around, but just being able to do Water Water Colorless 110 doesn't really sound like a lot, but while they're not able to knock you out, if you can get this card going and just using some attacks, and then maybe also using uh, Mix Herb and Giant Potion, as we've talked about, or Great Potion, just to heal the damage off of this card, it could really be a powerful threat. And then whenever you need to take that big knockout, you can use the GX attack to knock out just a relevant big threat of theirs. So the biggest issues with this card are going to be that you can't really power a lot of them up. And once they take a knockout on one of these, it's going to be really hard to get another attack off for that game. So that's why this card ends up being lower on the list. But it is inherently a very powerful card. Anytime that a safeguard-like effect is printed in standard, it hasn't really been bad. And so this is just something that we're going to have to consider going into this upcoming format because of how good the tag teams are. We've mentioned a bunch of different tag teams in this set review, and they're all going to be very solid contenders for Worlds, and there are some that we haven't even mentioned yet, so I think that this Keldeo is definitely a card you need to consider for this format. If maybe you're necessarily not necessarily trying something rogue, but if you're trying to counter the metagame, this is a card that I would definitely be thinking about because of such the large number of tag teams that exist. Coming in at number 6, we have Weavile GX. This is a card that's very talked about because it has essentially started this whole new Dark Box deck. So let's see exactly what this card does. It is a 200 HP Stage 1 Dark Pokemon with an ability and 2 attacks. The ability being Shadow Connection. As often as you like during your turn, you may move a basic Dark Energy from one of your Pokemon to another of your Pokemon. Notably, this is different from things like Hydreigon because it cannot move Special Energy. So it has to be a basic dark energy. So keep that in mind whenever you're deck building with this card. Outside of that, for dark, dark, colorless, you have Claw Slash for 130. And then the GX attack for one colorless is Nocturnal Maneuvers. You search your deck for any number of basic Pokemon and you put them onto your bench. Then you shuffle your deck. So most relevantly, we are using this card for its Shadow Connection ability alongside other really powerful dark Pokemon that were printed in this upcoming set such as Darkrai Umbreon Tag Team and Mega Sableye and Tyranitar. So I'm not going to spend all the time reading those cards because it is a lot of text, but both of those are solid attackers in this deck that you can use that have high HP totals, and being weakness to fighting is really not as big of a deal as it has been in the past with relevant fighting type cards rotating like Lycanroc and Buzzwell GX. So this deck can take some big knockouts, and if you're able to get these energies in play, with things like Darkrai Prism Star or with Naganadal, you can power up this deck that ends up being very strong and hard to deal with. Max Push and Rotating is also another bane for this deck, but just being able to switch out these attackers with the new stadium that gives uh, Dark Pokemon Retreat, um, Free Retreat, ends up allowing you to switch through these and maybe making it harder for these Pokemon to get knocked out. So, very strong deck that has very good math on its own. The combination between Umbreon and Darkrai tag team with the threat of Mega Sableye and Tyranitar ends up letting you take really huge knockouts with for a lot of damage if you can get all these energies in play. But with our only real energy acceleration being another stage one that we mentioned in the form of Naganadal and Darkrai Prism Star, which is a one of that you have to have two of these energies in your hand to play, not entirely sure of how consistent this is going to be. Uh, this deck has been uploaded to the channel in the form of a testing grounds, so if you'd like to see that or more of this archetype, you can see it there. But all in all, this deck would not be possible without Weavile GX to just get this whole deck going. So that's why this is the card that we're highlighting for this deck, taking up the number 6 spot on our top 10. Coming in at number 5 is our only stadium card on the list. It is Giant Hearth. 
It says, once during each player's turn, that player may discard a card from their hand. If they do, that player searches their deck for up to two fire energy cards, reveals them, and puts them into their hand. Then that player shuffles their deck. So this card essentially turns any card in your hand into a professor's letter for two fire energies. We've already seen the strength of Viridian Forest just discarding a card to get one energy. So now this card for the fire type decks is discarding a card to get two fire energies. And with Welder, this is a very synergistic combo that could replace cards like Fiery Flint in those decks. Since the decks don't really need four cards in their hand in one turn, you can use Giant Hearth just to get the two energies that you need to use Welder. Where Fiery Flint is good is if you have a Welder and you don't have an energy to attach for the turn, it lets you get your attachment guaranteed as well. But you still have the three cards to draw off of Welder to possibly hit another Fire Energy, or you could just have a Fire Energy in your hand. So, not entirely certain if this completely replaces Fiery Flint, but because of its obvious synergies with Welder, this card is so high on the list because it just allows you to guarantee more times you're going to get two energies off of Welder instead of one, or hopefully not playing it for zero, but maybe if you do, you might need to. So, Giant Hearth is just a very strong card that is going to be seeing play for as long as Welder is in standard format. And since these cards came back to back, this is going to be a very synergistic combo for these decks for as long as they're in standard together. So, if you're building anything that has Welder in it, this is a card that I would immediately slap into that list as fast as you can, just because it's a great stadium to bump Viridian Forest or other things that your opponents might have to get your own value off of it, getting your fire energies. So, a very strong card in the Retroram Charizard decks, or maybe in a Mew Mewtwo shell, kind of like how Eric uploaded to the channel in the Testing Grounds video. So, definitely check this card out if you're playing Fire-type attackers. Coming in at number four on our list is Raichu and Alolan Raichu GX. This card is insane. It is a basic lightning type Pokemon with 260 HP tag team with two different attacks, one normal attack and one GX attack. The regular attack for lightning, lightning colorless is tandem shock for 80 damage. And if this Pokemon was on the bench and became your active Pokemon this turn, this attack does 80 more damage and your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. And then the GX attack being Lightning Ride for Lightning Lightning Colorless, it does 150, and you switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon, and then if this Pokemon has at least two extra energy attached to it, you do 100 more damage. So 250, and you switch this with one of your bench Pokemon if you have five energy attached to it. So this card is very solid and immediately goes into all of the Pikachu Zekrom lists, in my opinion. The only thing that gives this card a little bit of struggling is that a skateboard lets people retreat if they are paralyzed, but being able to retreat back and forth between these Raichu and Alolan Raichus with a card like Zeraora means you can do this 160 and paralyze their active immediately, and they have to have a card that gets them out of the active or they will just get knocked out by any of the Pokemon in your deck. If you use Full Blitz onto an Alolan Raichu, Raichu and then you use Tandem Shock, if they don't have a way to get out of the active, you can Zera Aura back into your Pikachu Zekrom and use Full Blitz again, getting even more energy onto your board. And you don't even have to have the Full Blitz to do this at first. You could use something like Thunder Mountain or Tabu Koko Prism Star to get this card powered up as fast as possible. And I think that this will probably become the most dominant way to play the Pikachu Zekrom deck in the future. You have Tag Switch, which allows you to have a powered up Raichu and Alolan Raichu GX and then bench another one retreat with Zera Aura, tag switch, and attach an energy to just keep this attack going. But also you have all the power of the Pikachu Zekrom deck that has existed in this format since before rotation. A lot of the strength of this deck does not rotate. You still keep Thunder Mountain, Tapu Koko Prism Star, and Pikachu Zekrom post-rotation. So I think this card just enhances a powerful deck into something even better than it already was and forces them to come up with answers like Switch or an Escape Board to retreat their active so that they don't just get knocked out on your next turn. So Raichu and Alolan Raichu GX, such a powerful lightning type card that can go into an already established deck. Very solid to see where this card shows up because your ability to retreat back and forth with Zera Aura is so easy right now to just keep this attack going. So definitely look out for Tandem Shock in the future. This card is definitely a must pick up for the unified mindset. Coming in at number three is Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX. This is a psychic 270 HP basic with an ability and one GX attack. So the ability 
is called Perfection. What an impressive name for an attack. It says this Pokemon can use the attacks of any Pokemon GX or Pokemon EX on your bench or in your discard pile. You still need the necessary energy to use these attacks. And then the GX attack for Psychic Psychic Colorless Plus is Miraculous Duo GX. It does 200 and if you have at least one extra energy attached to it, you heal all damage from all of your Pokemon. So this card is just insane. And the reason why it's so high is because of standard and expanded implications. For the standard format, you still have Mysterious Treasure to discard stuff. But there's also things like Malamar and Welder that let you power this attacker up. You don't get to use Triple Acceleration Energy because it's a basic. So you don't get to abuse any really largely energy constant attacks. But being able to use things like Welder or Malamar, any of the other ways to increase this um, attacker to have more energy on it, make it so that you can just use so many different attacks. And it's really hard to nail down where this card can slip into for a deck just because you can put it into so many different things. Being able to use attacks of Pokemon on your bench means that you can play this as like a one of in a lot of different random decks just so that you can mix up your typing. But also it has 270 HP. So... Maybe you use this in Pikachu Zekrom to use Full Blitz and have 30 more HP than your Pikachu Zekrom. Or um, just other decks like that just give that little HP boost that might be relevant with the rotation of Choice Band. But outside of that, in Expanded is where this card can shine absurdly. You have Dimension Valley so that you can lower all the attack costs by one. You have Battle Compressor to discard stuff. And then Expanded, there's just such crazy powerful things you can copy like Quaking Punch, Seismitoad, or you can use the Promo Sogalio to accelerate energy and play this kind of like a Mega Manetric style deck. Just the amount of things that you can do with this card are truly absurd. You can play this in Archie Stoys and discard anything else that you're not going to use and then use that attack off of Mewtwo and Mew GX. So just the variety of things you can do with this card are so ridiculously endless that it's just going to be one of the most powerful cards, I believe to say, in both formats. Truly is breakable with any combination of stuff. And I think that if you're willing to take the time to brew the Mewtwo and Mew deck, you might end up with the most strong, with the strongest deck in standard format. So that's why we all have it so high, just because the potential for this card to succeed is so exponential because GXs are still being printed and there are already so many good EXs and GXs between both formats that you can use with this card. So it's really hard to nail down what the best way to use this card is. Sorry that I can't really help you there, but... Hopefully this can get your brain churning with any number of the EXs and GXs that are in both formats just as a random attacker to use. And the fact that it goes on both your bench and your discard pile is so crazy because you can not even really need the discard synergies. You could just use this as an extra copy of something in your deck so that you can kind of cut down on some other cards that you might have to play one or two of. So a super awesome sweet inclusion for those decks. And I'm really excited to just see where this card can slot in to feature stuff in the format. Coming in at number two is Reset Stamp. This is a really simple item card that says that your opponent shuffles their hand into their deck and draws a card for each of their remaining prize cards. So this is generally a one-sided end for your opponent. And this card is a lot better than I think that people are giving it credit for. Um, being able to get this off of Jirachi means that you don't have to play a ton of them in your deck to get this card when you need to. And the draw support in standard is about to decrease pretty significantly. There's Zebstrika and Pidgeotto that we mentioned as like random options you can play, but not a lot of decks are playing those cards. So with Zorak rotating out of the format, Reset Stamp could be a really big way to punish decks, especially ones that are trying to get a lot of cards in their hand for synergistic combos like Welder or other options. So Reset Stamp, just being able to kind of put some disruption back into the hands of the players for what's in your opponent's hand makes this card very solid. It's different than N because you don't just get the upside of having a consistency card in the early game and then a disruptive card in the late game. So I like this more from a design standpoint because you have to commit the space into your deck to play this style of effect, whereas N you can just kind of get the two for one. So Reset stamp, stamp ends up being this really solid item card that can just punish decks that get ahead really early without thinning out their deck and could really make them struggle. If you're going against like Rush Ram Charizard and they take a knockout on your tag team or whatever, if you bump their Giant Hearth and then you play Reset Stamp on them and you knock out their active, they could just lose a game from not drawing anything outside of that point. So not necessarily encouraging players to play this so that your opponent's dead draw, but this card is very solid for trying to just get that job done. So 
if your deck ends up having a few extra spaces and you think that you can afford to play this card, I would definitely put it in and try it out because it will increase the number of games that your deck wins as opposed to decks that times that you lose just because your opponent gets ahead and they stay ahead because you're able to disrupt their hand and force their options. Last but not least, coming in unsurprisingly at number one is Cherish Ball. All but one of us had this as our number one on our list and the person that didn't had it as their number two. So this is obviously a very strong card and I would say the most essential impactful card that comes out of this set just for the generic standard environment. So Cherish Ball is a item that just searches your deck for a GX, you reveal it and you put it into your hand. So notably this does not get EXs, so the expanded implications are relatively low and there's also Ultra Ball in that format now that Ultra Ball is rotating out of standard. Finally, after like seven years or some crazy number like that, ever since first being printed in Dark Explorers, but Cherish Ball for standard is going to be a very played card in most likely all of your decks that play GX Pokemon. It just says search your deck for a GX, put it into your hand, and that's very strong. The amount of GXs that we've talked about on this list is very high, and for the decks that aren't playing Mysterious Treasure or Netball or something that's very specific to your type, this is going to be the next consistency option for those decks. Um, it allows the Rush Ram Charizard deck to get a Rush Ram Charizard or an EV Snorlax. The Buzzwool Feramosa decks can get Buzzwool Feramosa. Outside of that, just GXs are just going to be the generally strongest Pokemon in every single set that we've had so far. So any GX deck that exists in this upcoming format is going to be playing this card. You can get this off of Alola Ninetales also, so you can get whatever GX you need to. You can get this, you can get Alola Ninetales GX off of a Cherish Ball so that you can go get more Cherish Balls for other Pokemon, so it really allows your decks to get going with that card. And it's really not that much to talk about outside of this, other than just being some of the best piece of consistency that we have for those decks. Not necessarily like excited to see this in the sense that it's really going to change standard, but it's definitely going to help fix the role that Ultra Ball is leaving out of standard for your decks that revolve a lot around GX Pokemon. So, very solid card to end our list. I know it's not necessarily the most interesting card, but definitely is just the strongest card in this set that I would immediately get four of so that you can play any number of them in your decks that do suit it. All right, and with that comes the end of our top 10 cards for Unified Minds. So let us know in the comments, do you agree or disagree with our choices? Do you think that certain things should be higher or lower? Is there something that we just completely missed in general? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to discuss and talk about that, get the chat going just for some discussion about this set. This is a very relevant set as it comes out right before Worlds, rotation is happening, and there's a lot of stuff here that's going to shake up standard. So if you want to support our channel, you can like, subscribe this video. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and we have a Patreon as well that you can get deck advice. We write articles on there, and you get some selection of what our videos are coming up. Also, if you enjoy top 10s like this, I'm going to be posting some more top 10s on the channel that are not just going to be top 10s for each set. So if you have a specific top 10 of something that you'd want to see, maybe like a top 10 of a certain type, top 10 of a supporter, top 10 of something, let us know in the comments because that's something that I'm going to be funneling out with some more free time that I have upcoming. So really excited to get back on the channel, even though I swear every time I'm trying to record something, I start sounding sick. So thank you guys for bearing with me on this super cool top 10 for Unified Minds. This is Xander Bennett from Mary Candy signing out. Stick with us on the channel. Thanks.